Hey, how's it going? So um, today I'm going to talk about the hidden secrets of social media and viral advertising. And it's good that I'm talking about that because it's actually the only thing that I'm good at um, is making things go viral on the web. And, and so I'll, I'm going to stick entirely to, to that theme. Um, so the question that I've been asking for about a decade is how do you make something go viral? How do you take your idea, your dream, your concept, your media, your company, whatever it is, your political campaign, and get um, people to share it, pass it around, um, and have it reach millions of people through word of mouth. So um, I got started in this through these early viral media experiments where I created something, told a few friends, and watched as they spread. The first was something um, was when I was a board graduate student at MIT, and I went to Nike's website, and I, they did just launched Nike ID, and I decided to customize a pair of Nike shoes with the word sweatshop. Um, and I was just sort of curious, is Nike going to send me a pair of shoes that say sweatshop on them? Uh, turns out they weren't. We had a humorous email exchange back and forth. I sent it to a few friends. Um, and then even though I didn't know much about the sweatshop issue, I ended up on the Today Show being interviewed um, by Katie Couric um, and debating a Nike executive about something I really knew nothing about. Um, <laughs> And, um, and that sit, sitting there, it made me think, OK, if you can make something that ordinary people want to pass around with each other, you can reach millions of people, get the attention of the press, make something that um, you know, gets them a lot bigger than maybe it even should. Um, next, I created something called the New York City Rejection Line with my sister as a stand-up comic. Um, the rejection line is a phone number where if someone's hitting on you and they won't take no for an answer, you can give them a local phone number and say, here's my number. And when they call, they get an automated rejection message. And we have uh, comfort specialists and various people to, to uh, um, talk to them. And, and that you know, spread to People Magazine and CNN and a bunch of places. We just told a few people and watched as it spread. Um, after that, the next project was Black People Love Us. Um, Black People Love Us was a website. Now, these, this, this is, this, uh, the, the Nike thing was 2001, Rejection Line 2002, Black People Love Us 2003, so you can see the web design is uh, appropriate for the, for the era. Um, but uh, Black People Love Us looked like the personal website of Sally and Johnny, two super white people, so proud of having black friends that they made a whole website to celebrate it. Um, and, you know, we, uh, we, uh, um, weren't really experts on race, but we told a few people, ended up in the New York Times. We ended up on Good Morning America talking with Diane Sawyer about race. You can see we have the little coffee mugs that you get when you go on, on morning talk shows. Um, and so after doing these three projects, I thought, OK, can you use this to do something useful besides just amuse yourself? Um, and um, around that time, I was doing some political work with someone named Ken Lair, who later became my partner in the Huffington Post with uh, Ariana Huffington. And we launched the Huffington Post. And for me, the Huffington Post was an opportunity to, to make things that didn't just go viral and crash, but to make th a platform where you're constantly launching new things that can take off. And you can keep growing and growing and get something that gets bigger and bigger through time, because there's always some new news story or some new thing to, to, to post. Um, so what did I learn from these experiences? Um, um, and I'm going to you know, share with you a few of the things I've learned over the years about how do you make stuff spread, how do you make things go viral. So um, the first is that content spreads different, um, for different reasons on different platforms. So if you want your content to spread on Google, you, you behave a little bit differently than if you want your content to spread on Facebook or on Twitter or on, on StumbleUpon or other, other platforms. So um, the biggest sort of difference is that the Google worldview, I think, is pretty well known now. So Google. Um, is um, a mature platform. And um, the Google worldview is really that media is about content. So access to information is the key. Google is trying to connect you with information and get that information into your head. Um, so the sites that perform well on Google, like about.com is an awesome startup story. Google is, is getting big. There's no media company perfectly optimized for Google. About.com launches. Um, and they just have this knowledge-centric, knowledge keyword-centric approach to media. So um, how can I get rid of my slice when I'm golfing? Some dude golfs a lot. I never golfed, but he golfs a lot. He wants to get rid of his slice. He does a Google search. He lands on this page. Um, or um, how do I stop oily skin? If you have oily skin, I know some of us do, you can do a search. You find out an answer to that. Um, or how do you fill out your tax return? All very practical, information-based landing pages. And those do really well on Google. Um, 
But Facebook is less well understood when it comes to media and content and how media and content spreads. So the Facebook worldview is that media is really just another way to express your feelings. Um, and more importantly, it's a way to do something with your friends. It's not so much about the information, it's about the social interaction and, and engagement with other people. So this is a picture of two basset hounds running. Um, the reason I'm showing you this picture is because this, isn't import this is not important information. This isn't like um, I'm organizing the world's information and I want to have a big place uh, for, for the Basset Hounds Running, which was you know, the Google's, Google's slogan of organizing the world's information. However, Basset, Hound running, running, Basset Hounds Running turns out to be a great way to interact with your friends around content. So um, here is a post about Basset Hound Runnings, and uh, it has over 40,000 likes on Facebook. I'm sure it's another 20,000 more now. Um, and there's many, many images of this. And the reason it's nice to share it with your friends is that it's, it's fun to share a laugh. It's fun to give someone something early, uh, um, to, to pass something on early so that you kind of look cool that you send a funny link uh, first. Um, and it's kind of universal. Animals and babies and humor, certain kinds of humor are kind of universal. So you can post it to your Facebook wall and know that your mom's going to like it, your dad's going to like it, your, 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 your friend who kind of like is into sort of weird shit's going to like it. And uh, it'll work for everyone. Um, so on Facebook, really, the key is that you share things that define you and that make you look good. So um, you don't really see people um, posting on Facebook, hey, c does anyone know where that celebrity sex tape is, or on Twitter. However, people Google that stuff like crazy. So, so uh, you know, it's, it's not so much about the content, it's about how do you appear, when you share something on Facebook, does it make you look like a good guy? You know, like, it's a lot, you, you look a lot better if you're helping the people of Japan, and you really do care about that issue too, but you look like a good guy if you're, if you're posting a Facebook status about that, um, than if you're posting, like, something that's kind of, kind of trashy or, or self-helpy. So, so um, a post that did uh, got over a million visitors on BuzzFeed was this 100 best signs at the rally to restore sanity. And this turned out to be one of the perfect kind of Facebook posts because um, a lot of people were, you know, upset with Glenn Beck and upset with like the political discourse. This rally happens. The signs are funny, so you can share a joke. But also by posting it, you show people where you stand politically and you show people what matters to you. And and so there's the content matters, but also um, even more importantly is your ability to share a laugh with a friend and to say what you believe in and what you stand for. Um, so. So there's a, there's a kind of social quality to content like this that nobody goes to, you know, to, to Google to search for this stuff, but they do um, uh, have, it, have the kind of enjoyment of sharing it with a friend. So really the key is that for social content distribution, social is more important than information. It's not about information. And this is something that I think Google sometimes struggles to understand when they're doing their social initiatives. It's not about the information. It's not about organizing the information. It's about... Um, it's about the social interaction. Um, so we started BuzzFeed as a new kind of media company for a social world. The idea behind BuzzFeed is that we're a hub for viral content and a social distribution platform for, for publishers, for advertisers, for, for a bunch of people who are trying to share their content on the web. Um, so this is um, a little preview of the new front page of BuzzFeed that isn't live yet. So, um, and, and you can see on the left-hand side, you get a bunch of content that is the type content that people freak out about and share. And people come to BuzzFeed to find new things to share um, on, on the left. And then on the right, you have a ranked list of the most things that are getting the most social sharing, the most um, 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 viral lift across the web. So you can see what is actually hot and what's already taken off. Um, oh, actually, could you go back one slide? Well, it's okay. You know, fast. Wow. Um, so um, the, the navigation also shows kind of the difference between the traditional social worldview, where you'd have a navigate, uh, sorry, the traditional search worldview or media worldview, where you'd have entertainment, business, sports, media, categories, keywords, topics. And instead, we have the kinds of reactions that people make to content. LOL, cute, win, fail, OMG. It's about the person and their reaction to the content. So these reaction buttons become a new way of organizing media, not around um, what, the t what they're about, but around how it makes you feel, how it makes you react to the content. Um, so 
every piece of content on BuzzFeed has these buttons underneath the content where you can click a button to say, this is LOL, this is OMG, this is cute. And we found that about 80% of comments are really people just saying, like, wow, those basset hounds are cute, or, or oh my god, this is shocking. And by putting these buttons, you can make a really simple, lightweight way for people to express their reaction. And then once you've expressed your reaction, you're a lot more likely to share. So you can see, you know, share on Twitter um, as, um, once you say it's LOL. So Greg H. thinks the Basset Hound's running is win, LOL, and cute. A lot of other people express their reaction. A lot of other people <laughs> express their reaction all under that piece of content. Um, and then once you've expressed your reaction, you're likely to share on Facebook or Twitter, and that drives a lot of sharing. Because now it's not just the content, it's you, it's your uh, relationship with the content. Another way we do this is through add yours. So Disaster Girl uh, was a, a meme that started on BuzzFeed. So this little girl, her father actually took this picture of her, you know, I don't know, there's no evidence that she burned the house down, but like her, her expression suggests that she may have. Um, and this picture starts spreading around the web and is one of those things people pass around. Um, and so what we did is we cut her face out and we said, well, if she, if she caused that disaster, you know, she caused a lot of other disasters. Here she is being overlaid on top of, uh, of Rebecca Black and you can see the, the overlay tool. Um, uh, here, um, here she is uh, uh, responsible for Barney. Um, and uh, you know, here she is uh, at the moment when Bill and Hillary met. And these are all uploaded by users who, who want to, to you know, become part of the media and part of the content. Um, so you know, the key to viral is not about making, uh, it, a viral is making it about your users, their reactions, their sharing, their friends, and not just about your content. And it's easy to get obsessed with your, what your content is and just think about that. But the social engagement is, is, uh, is, is as important or even more important for social distribution. And so the way that we sort of think about this is that the new sort of metric that we are obsessed with at BuzzFeed is viral lift. So the blue line on this graph, um, the blue on the graph shows the traffic we sent to a post or a piece of content. The red shows all of the extra you get for free when people share your content, pass it around when it starts to go viral. And making the viral lift as big as possible is really the key, sort of key to success for social distribution. So you can see the Rally to Restore Sanity signs, it's, it's almost all red. It's huge, you know, hundreds of thousands of Facebook um, likes and traffic, um, and lots from Reddit and from StumbleUpon and other social sites. Basset Hound running, still going strong, uh, a lot from StumbleUpon, a lot from Facebook. So those, are, those um, slides are, are the, the viral analytics dashboard that we give to our partners and to our, we use ourselves, and it's sort of the way we see which content is taking off. So these techniques of letting people react and letting people become part of, of it and adding to the content has the effect of having our content spread across platforms like Facebook um, at a really rapid rate. So Yahoo Labs just put this study out of the most liked sites on Facebook. And BuzzFeed is in the top 10, even though, you know, ahead of much bigger sites like CNN or Huffington Post or um, Reuters or AOL News, a bunch of uh, sites that are many times bigger. But because our content is spreading um, um, through, through the social distribution channel and people just can't resist sharing it and liking it, um, we end up getting a lot more, more likes and a lot more social, distribu social distribution. Um, so um, the, the other sort of piece of all of this is social advertising. So um, social actions, um, and viral lift really um, can be applied to branded content just as much as it can be applied to editorial content or user-generated content. So um, at BuzzFeed, we, we, have, we partner with brands where they can post onto the BuzzFeed site. So this is an example of Coca-Cola. Um, the one um, on the right is, um, G uh, is from GE's Eco-Imagination campaign. But they can put their branded content onto BuzzFeed, use our same CMS with the same reaction buttons, with the same sharing tools, with all of the stuff that we built. And I think you're going to see a big shift in the industry right now, where um, right now there's all of these sites that have built these CMSs that they use for their content. And then they use a totally different CMS for their advertising. They use an ad server and banner ads, and they're, and, and they're managing um, all of the investment in their CMS is not helping them make more money. It's, it, it's not helping them um, with their advertising or with their advertising partners. And I think you see a big trend where um, you know, at BuzzFeed, we build one CMS. It works for branded content. It works for user-generated content. And it works for our own uh, editorial content. And that means that we can invest in one awesome platform for spreading content and make it, um, um, it work for everyone. Um, 
The other piece is branded reaction buttons and badges, so for, for brands. So um, The Poor Decisions of Todd Margaret is, an, uh, is a film that David Cross is in. They were an advertiser. We added a Poor Decision badge that our users loved, and it popped a picture of uh, David Cross's uh, face when, the, when, they won, when it wins the badge. Um, branded content, so Yaya is um, a spokesperson for Kraft Athena's um, hummus. And, um, she uh, disapproves of everything that's not traditional. So she loves traditional hummus, but she also hates everything not traditional, including things that we all take for granted. So our users could bomb add her to Charlie Sheen and other things on the web. Um, Living Social did a campaign with us where they um, where the guy from the Living Social Super Bowl ad, who's like do going crazy with daily deals, um, we cut him out, and he could be bombed across um, other pieces of, of content on the web. And, and so really, like the, the whole way that we think about content, and we do this for branded advertisers as well, is you have socially engaging content on the left. You push that out to all these interesting social platforms across the web. And then you maximize for viral lift. So you see which piece of content is spreading on Twitter, which piece of content is spreading on Facebook, where are you getting the most lift, and um, which pieces of content aren't working. You stop showing those. You stop promoting those. And you just promote the things that work the best on each platform to maximize how much viral lift you get, how much earned media and organic um, traffic you get. So um, I'm running out of time, but um, social distribution is a huge growth opportunity. And I think um, people are just beginning to understand it. Um, you know, BuzzFeed's site is growing like crazy. We're, we're going to hit 12 million uniques this month, and we've been um, you know, growing uh, faster and faster. And we've also been using our technology to help um, major partners grow, like brands and, and publishers. And um, the sort of key takeaway, if you want to use some of these, um, these principles, is you know, think of your social content um, not as information that you're trying to get into people's heads, but think of it as an excuse for social action, a reason for people to react, share their opinion, um, or share, share content. And so if you have a way for your users to react, if you have a way for them to share and have a shared experience, if you do both of those things well, you'll get a much bigger viral lift where you're getting more under media, more sharing, more people freaking out and passing their stuff on to everyone they know uh, across all the social platforms that have emerged in the last, uh, in the last few years. So thank you. I don't think we, we don't have questions, do we?